Hello. My name is George Alarte. That's me. And for the last decade, I've been a graphic designer at the global toy and entertainment company Spin Master. Spin Master has been designing, developing, manufacturing consumer products for children all around the world since 1994. Bring your Hatchimals, Paw Patrol, Rector, and Bakugan. I'm here to speak about the program ESCO Studio. ESCO created in 2006, but can you believe I've only discovered it in 2017? So for like many years, I was going in the darkness, not knowing what to do. Uh, you know what I'm saying. I'm going to walk you through three case studies or projects I use ESCO Studio. And through these stories, I hope to show you the power of software and how it transformed me as a packaging designer. I can remember the first time I saw ESCO Studio. March 2017. Ugh. Employee evaluations are happening this week with the creative dork, I mean, director, who also happens to be the biggest bully at work. Another year of meets expectations, I guess. After meeting with the boss, my buddy Serge pulled me into a demo and presentation from the audio dudes. I came for the lunch. Unfortunately, there was none. Got stuck in a seat where I couldn't escape without being noticed. And then the demo started. But what we saw blew us away. I mean, the program was rendering packaging in real time, visually changing and rendering printing effects, matte varnishes, spot UV, hot foil stamping, foil bags, auto labels. It was all amazing. I couldn't believe it. It was all working with Illustrator, uh, Adobe Illustrator. ESCO would be back in a month to train us. I knew I just had to be in that training session. June 2017. Yeah. This ESCO training session is way too early, and I'm usually late. To no one's surprise, it, IT didn't supply us with enough laptops to train with. So we had a huddle around in groups trying to learn studio. And we had a fantastic ESCO representative, Paul Plank. He was a graphic designer, and, and he knew how to use Adobe Illustrator. So he kind of was able to walk us through and, and get our feet wet. And it's always daunting learning a new program. But Paul was great. He was like our shepherd. He was able to guide us. And that's what these guys are great at. They, they, they're able to support you when you're trying to learn these new software. And over the course of two days, he taught a studio, and, and we were on our way to creating 3D packages. And this was my first uh, 3D render in studio. The Airhog AR Nitro Boost. Had the window blistered, chip art, full board material, outer carton, had a reflective floor, which we used to do in Photoshop, a packaging artwork, product, in a blister. It had everything. I could rotate it and and see all the effects and and it, it was great. So it was it was it was pretty awesome. This is my first studio and when then I was I was really happy at the time. <laughs> July twenty seventeen. A weekend and I've got the basics down. I mean, I had to totally ignore actual work, freaking work through lunch and ignore my work BFF. He was mad. But every day was progress. Learning and exploring studio. Uh, every day, just learning new things and learning new techniques. And by the time I got the hang of it, I wanted to reach back into my archives for projects I'd previously created that fell short of what I envisioned when we received samples from China. Bad tape jobs, dinged up in transit. I wanted to write some wrongs. So one of the first projects I took to studio was the Meccano Mecha Spider. And it was, it's, it's a box, but it had all these great angles to it. And it had this corrugate handle that came out from the top. And it was all one folded, one box, paper uh, part that folded into a box. And I, I, I liked, I, I put all these studio finishes and all these little things on it. And I was really happy, um, but it was a, it's just a box, you know, it doesn't have all like the inner blister and the inner carton and the product and all that stuff. Um, and so when you build that stuff, you take it into the Studio Toolkit. And then Studio Toolkit is kind of like the garage for me. It's like where you build your, your package. Um, you, you take all the parts and you put it together. And there's a little bit of a learning curve. I mean, the whole, 
3D environment thing is kind of new to me. Um, so it was a little bit of a, it was a little bit clumsy to start learning it. But once I got the hang of it, I broke it down into three sort of steps, which was to gather and assemble your files in Studio Toolkit, design your project using assembled files in Adobe Illustrator, and generate packages at your leisure, like when you're watching webinars with me or other things like that. Uh, but in time, I was able to make it, you know, really get the hang of it and started creating renders like this, where we sort of have the package with all kinds of parts to it, including photo logos and spot UV, uh, photo inserts in the product. And which is, what's amazing about studios, you could export into a key shot file. Now, if you really want to punch up the drama, you really want to get really excellent images, you start taking into key shot and sort of get these realistic renders and really high and high and glossy images for pack shots. Um, and just to show you what is on the web right now, this is how it, uh, microdote is seen on Amazon. And you can see they don't compare. And maybe that's why it's on sale. But hey, we got four stars, so. July 2017, nothing else matters. I'm spending half my days at work taking the studio. And it's one thing to work on packages I've already completed, like all the mechanical stuff. But what about new projects? Where the stakes are a little bit higher. Enter the paper shredders, a product line of toy instruments. And the feature of the toy was that it was super flat and it could trigger simulated guitar playing had had a great try on shelf and needed a peg on the shelf too. Needed to communicate a lot of information, a track list, different things like that. And this was a great way to, for me to work with Product CAD, which is the, the plastic toy, and Audios CAD, which is the paper, and put those files together. So we worked through our structures and got one, and we started moving forward. And at this time of the project, I rely on my old skill set putting together mood boards, generating concepts, researching and developing graphics, and designing logos. That's what I do naturally. But at this stage, I had something new in my arsenal, which was Esco Studio. And working on a flat pack packaging file, it's, all, it's almost always a crazy shape, some odd puzzle, hard to visualize. With the help of Esco Studio, I'm able to see what the packaging will look like once folded. No need to bother the structural engineer to see what a minute change will look like. No need to pull out the exacto knives to create miniature versions of your packaging. You can see them in real time, and you can see the changes in real time. And so I was able to quickly work through a bunch of different concepts because I already had it sort of constructed. And so this was the first phase. Second phase, we start entering uh, some kids in the packaging, start uh, honing down on what we want to do. Phase three, we start in bringing a, a bunch of different products into the line, display units. We had this little drum where this paper uh, sleeve folded over it. So it was really interesting ways to work with the packaging in the studio and, and uh, get a, a bunch of different treatments. And once we're done with phase three, we get to phase four, which is final art. And we're really happy with sort of where this went. But truth be told, it got killed at the very last second. So no harm, no foul. <laughs> you know, the stakes were high because it was real, but, you know, we were able to uh, get some practice from this, I guess. August 2017. Major emergency meeting today. New project lands on my lap, which should be cool, right? And we have a little over a month to nail the design and get it approved. Yeah, I'm not worried at all. The product was initially named QB, which eventually turned into Boxer. He's a little robot and a cute cube form factor, super interactive with a huge personality. Hey, Boxer, are you there? 
last boxer. He got a lot of attention at New York Toy Fair. So we, the brand team wanted to make sure that they pushed this product and capitalized on the moment. And it was crunch time. And usually when we present, we have to try to have a pro illustrate our ideas. We call them blue line sketches. But I had no time to reach out to a sketch artist as I needed to get this approved on the structure quick. So I had to make do with my own illustration skills, which are, well, you'll see. <laughs> Option one. This was a box that had a big blister window on the top, and we we're thinking maybe Boxer could be doing his little, or QB could be doing his little wheelie pose in here. And so those, those were sort of the tur turnarounds I had for it. Um, for the next option, you know, we wanted to punch it up a little bit. Uh, so this, this idea was QB Boxer would be peeping up from the top of the box in the, a hole where the, the blister window went on the top. And it was like a clamshell packaging where you open it up and, you know, maybe the idea is that QB would jump off the packaging when you open it. And then for the third option, which is probably my favorite sketch, <laughs> was uh, this idea that maybe when the box opens, uh, something would happen, whether it was lights or sounds, maybe see some information around the box. Uh, this was probably the worst sketch I've ever drawn. <laughs> but maybe if I made it blue, it would look like those blue line sketches. No, it didn't. So once I got those uh, concepts through, I brought it to my structural engineer, and we started working on real-world uh, die lines for the packages. So option one, he was able to give me this. Option two, the clamshell. And option three, which was that box that kind of opened up. Shout out to my structural engineer, Jerry Tillett, for this. So this was the first option. Get the graphics on there. And once I got get it to this point, you can start rendering. So this was the first render that popped out from this option one, which was the blister on the top, had uh, the product inside, playing with the uh, with this ball. See from the top, and you can see it. It didn't deviate too far from my sketch. Pretty close on. Um, so I knew I could jump whole stages, get that first initial sketch. And once I got that approved, I could get it to this stage fairly quickly. And this one's pretty straightforward. It really looks like a toy. Uh, you know, it's a big blister window. So we, we, we knew we had to step it up for the second option, which was that clamshell. So once we got the die line down, sorry, I didn't graphics. And what's interesting about this package is if you look at the top, we had to make sure that when this box closed, those two sides aligned. And in Esco C, you could see that happening. So you don't have to print it, go back, check to make sure it works. You can all see it happening in real time. Um, and this was the render. And the idea was this, when you open it, that is great uh, visual color that just popped out at you. Uh, we really couldn't afford um, QB turning on when it, when it opened. I mean, it was going to cost a lot. So the idea behind this was the unboxing moment. Let's say you take QB and you open them, a ball pops out. And so you're interacting. I mean, it wasn't the moment of the idea that he was going to turn on, but you know, the, the thought that you open it and a ball would pop out and you're interacting with the packaging. Is a is a is okay unbox moment, so we were happy with that. For option three, which was the worst sketch, actually started turning out cooler than I thought. Had this real X Xbox vibe, probably the green, but I really liked the mystery behind it and sort of like this zooming thing that QB was doing. And the, the idea behind this packaging, well, let's see the render first. This was render, and when you open it. He had this great visual color. So the idea was like his eyes would be die cut. And when you walk past the packaging, the robot would turn on and he would interact with you. And, you know, when you open the package, he kind of lifts up a little bit. So that's kind of, that was really cool. These were the turnarounds. So with SKC, you could truly like take the package and, and rotate it around and get some really good visual shots. So the box mode for this guy was. What if you take Boxer QB 
you turn off the lights, and when you open it, you get lights and sound. Now, I know it's going to be really expensive for that, but we really wanted to show sort of the a range of what we were thinking, you know, from like the straightforward box to maybe you open it and a box comes out to open it and, the, and all of heaven pops out. October 13, 2017. Friday the 13th. What could go wrong? We only had a month to work on the QB project. I'm only presenting concepts to one of Spin Master's co founders, Ben Valley, and our CMO, Nancy Zeros. Tja, no sweat. But really, it was no sweat. Um, with the packaging renders that we created, and we had structures there, Ben was able to really visualize what was going to go on. And so we, we could totally skip a whole uh, month of development only because he was able to really see what we were trying to do and what we were trying to accomplish. Um, I don't know if you guys are out there, but could you guys switch when you picked? Well, if you pick the middle one, you were correct. Ben loved the peekaboo concept, the minimal graphics, and the charm of the packaging. And Nancy couldn't believe the speed in which we were able to deliver the packaging for this project from start to finish. And what was cool about this was now that the packaging was developed, it, it really became sort of part of the essence of, of Boxer. But I'm going to let Boxer tell you that. And what was really cool is like that they took the packaging that we created and actually built like the story around it. You know, it's, it's one, it, I mean, it's in a commercial. I was really excited about it. So and what was cool is that I had never had a, a commercial company ask me, uh, hey, can you turn over uh, packaging files for, you know, 3D packaging files for, for the commercial? And I was like, you know, normally if I didn't have studio, I'd be like, mm, there's no such thing. But here I was able to give them a 3D file and they were able to create this. So that was kind of cool. And um, there was a lot of unboxing videos for this packaging and, and this is what was one of them. So you could kind of see sort of like this buzz that was created around it. So you can see that the box opened up and the ball coming out and you're really reacting to it. I was, I was really exciting. So really nailed it on that one. November 1st, 2017, the boss man pulls me into his office. Remember that exceeds expectation you gave yourself? Congratulations. You won't believe this. I can't believe this. I got a promotion today. What the? My creative director was so impressed with my work. I made him look good this year, he said. And it's true. I don't know what I would have done with Studio. I don't know. I mean, I can tell you, like, it really had an impact on my career that year and, and sort of up, up my game and, and raised me to a level that I, I didn't know I could achieve. And that's the true story of how I stopped being a limpy packaging designer with the help of ESCO Studio. The end.